Hello, mes chers amis. Ici, c'est ton cher ami Sam, and welcome to another exciting Max MSP tutorial. So that um, that French opening, um, obviously in honor of today, which is Bastille Day, July the 14th, um, aka French Independence Day. Um, although it's not really an Independence Day, I guess, unless you count, unless maybe you're being very generous with your terms and you consider monarchy a kind of colonization of your own country um, or something. But in any case, lots of French festivities going on today. And if there's some noise during this recording, it's it's fine. It's just the sound of um, fighter jets flying very low to the ground and directly over this apartment. Um, but all that aside, you know, actually, uh, maybe it's, it's all this contemplation of uh, French culture and French ideas, and in particular, you know, uh, existential thinkers like Sartre and, and novelists like Proust that just got me thinking about, about time and the passage of time. And maybe it's for that reason that the other day I, I had made this, um, this patch. I'd started by making a jit.world, as one so often does. And of course, it's a very existential act to just make a jit.world without thinking about meaning or purpose. Um, I connected a toggle to the jit.world to activate it. And then, as one so often uh, does, I had made a jit.grab with the dimensions 640, 480, and the attribute at unique one. And then tossed a grab message. Oh, my lord. Tossed a grab message, I'm sorry, an open message uh, into a box, connected it to that grab, and then made a jit.p window to take a look at the output of the webcam. And um, it was in this situation, uh, as one so often does, that um, I started to think about age and uh, the ravages of time and how the inexorable, ex inexorable march of progress robs us of our youth and of our... Um, of our energy. And I got to thinking, wouldn't it be great if there was some way that we could relive the past, some way that we could uh, store it somehow? And of course, actually going back and revisiting the past is impossible, but at least in Max, we can preserve it, or at least we can preserve up to about like 12 frames of it, maybe, which for me is, is more than good enough. So um, that's the idea here. I wanna take the video as it's coming in, store it in a matrix, and then do some time-based manipulation uh, on it. So there are a few different ways that you can store matrices in Jitter, obviously. You can do jit.matrix set, you can do jit.record, you can use a 3D matrix. So you have, in addition to width and height, you also have depth, and uh, for depth you use, you just stack different frames on top of each other. Um, but none of those will let you then pass that matrix to a jit.gl.pix object as a texture to do texture processing on it. So instead of any of those, we're going to store um, in one big super matrix uh, in different cells, different frames of this matrix. Doesn't that sound exciting? I think it sounds exciting. So let's get right down to it. Um, I'm gonna start by making two integer boxes here. And we're gonna call these uh, rows and calls. I'm actually gonna pop open the inspector and change the scripting name of this first one to calls and the scripting name of this second one to rows. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that we can make an object called PVAR. And you may or may not remember PVAR, but the nice thing about PVAR is that whenever you change um, a named object, PVAR will automatically forward the update to that object. So that's convenient here for us. And you'll see why it's convenient in a second. But okay, this is columns. And this is gonna be the number of columns and rows in our big super matrix that stores um, you know, uh, previous frames of a video. So now we need to make that big matrix. We do jit.matrix, and we'll give this a nice French name like Napoleon, or maybe Louis. Louis is more appropriate for Bastille Day. Uh, for char, and for now we'll make the dimensions one and one, but we can set the dimensions using the columns and rows. Obviously the, the dimensions are gonna be the size of this matrix, 640, 480. 640 times the number of columns and um, 480 times the number of rows. So we'll do PVAR calls and PVAR 
rows, multiply the number of columns by 640 and the number of rows by 480. Pack these two together. Oh my life, what have I done? Pack these two together and then prepend, prepend dim to use this to set the dimensions of this matrix whenever the rows or columns change. And I'm gonna set the, just uh, click these, set it to three and then push enter to propagate those values through the, the p-bar, which I'll actually have to do a few times. I'll have to do that a few times during this tutorial, so. Um, okay, so that made a big matrix for us down here. Now we wanna put video from this matrix into here. And for that, uh, we need to turn on the destination dimension um, our attribute for this matrix. So come down in here and do at use dest dim one to turn on the destination dimension flag. And you'll actually have to set the columns and rows up here again, refresh those values. Um, so what that means is that we can now use the source uh, dest dim start and dest dim end messages to update where this matrix is gonna be writing into this matrix. So I'm going to shrink this and then make a trigger list bang, TLB, which is different from a BLT, unfortunately, and a counter object <clears throat> that's going to count uh, up to, so if, if we have three columns and three rows, that means we're gonna have nine different cells in our super matrix, and those are gonna be numbered zero through eight. So this counter just determines which one of those we're actually addressing, and we'll address them one after the other. So if I do PVAR, <clears throat> calls and multiply it by PVAR rows times. Um, and then, oh, actually we need a POC. I don't know, uh, I started calling this uh, pack with 1K POC after I heard people at Synmat doing it, but I wonder how people actually pronounce the, um, the double hot inlet pack object. Um, okay, anyway, pack those together and then multiply them and then subtract one to get how high your counter should be counting. So now that counter is counting up. And then of course, set these again to update those values. And now use this index to figure out where in this matrix to be writing. And that's not so bad. Um, we have the index. And if we take the index modulo, <clears throat> the number of columns, that will give us um, which uh, which column we're, we're addressing. And if we take that and we go um, divided by the number of columns where this is an integer division, um, this tells us which row we are, uh, we're dealing with. Um, so this will be which column and which row we're talking to. So if we take the, um, the column and multiply it by 640, that's of course how far over in the X dimension we wanna go. And we take the row and multiply it by 480, and that's how, how far down we wanna go. And then we seem to set the uh, dest dim with each of those. So that's pretty easy. We just do POC, or we can do pack here because um, they're gonna be coming in together. And then we can just do dest dim start like so. Um, and then if we take this guy and add 640 minus one, which is 639, and take this guy and add 480 minus one, which is 479, we get the end of the, the destination dimensions. So we'll just pack these together. Instead of dest dim start, we'll do dest dim, dest dim end. Perfect. And now, now my, my dear, dear friends, if we make a jit.p window and let's make a send render bang coming out of the middle outlet of this jit.world so we can get a bang every time a frame gets rendered. And then we'll do receive render bang jit.matrix 
Louis, and because uh, L L O U I S, and of course every time we bang on this matrix, it'll output what's in this matrix. And I think I may need to set the number of columns and number of rows again. Ah, and then the other thing that's missing here is that we set the dimensions, but we didn't actually put the matrix in. So we can do that just like that. And look at that, our super matrix is filling up where each cell in the matrix is um, one frame after the previous one. So that's pretty cool. That's all working correctly the way we would want it to. So what about that time-based processing? Well, to do the time-based processing I wanna do, I wanna pass this matrix over um, to a jit.gl.pix object so that it can do some processing on it. And what I wanna do exactly is use another matrix. So we'll be sampling this matrix and using another matrix where the, the value in that matrix, the grayscale value, will determine how far back in time you wanna go. So black will mean just give me the present and white will mean go nine samples back in time and get that frame. And we'll use that to make a present distorted matrix. It'll be, it'll be good, don't worry. You're worrying, don't worry. Um, okay, so to do that, we first need to make a jit dot, um, G let's actually start by making a jit dot matrix um, for float 32. Um, this matrix can be char, but uh, we're gonna need to go with float 32 for this guy. And the dimensions need to be the same as this. So we'll start by setting them to one and one, but then we'll use, I'll just copy paste this bundle of objects that um, updates the dimensions of a matrix to be columns times width, rows times height. Um, and then come over here, update columns, update rows. And then if I do set all zero bang, this not too excitingly should just output, uh, sorry, just a P window should just output a big black matrix and it does. And um, you can't tell because, you know, black, it changed from black to black. But if I make say a slider and I want the slider to go between zero and one with floating point output, normally I've with the inspector, it's a big pain in the ass, but you can actually just do at float output one at size one, which is pretty sweet. And now if we change set all here to be dollar one instead of zero and slide this slider around, ooh, look at that. We made, we made a thing. Okay, so that's gonna be, we're gonna be using this to um, look into this matrix. Um, but how exactly are we going to do that? Well, let's make our jit.gl.pix object and connect this matrix here and this matrix here, and then jump into this JIT GL picks to see what's going on. So um, I said that we're going to be sampling the left matrix. So we're going to need a sample object, of course. But how do we determine where to sample it? Well, uh, the way to determine where to sample it we're going to start by just using the normalized coordinates of the matrix. So we're gonna be sampling each one of these um, little windows normally. But then we're going to offset by um, some value that's determined by which column and row we want to use. And if you remember that uh, black and white matrix before, we're going to be using black zero to mean sample this first one, and white one to mean sample this one, and grayscale values in between, we'll pick a different one of these sub matrices um, to, to, to sample. So first, let's just deal with the normalized coordinates. So that's where within a particular one of these things we want to, to sample. That's easy enough. We just do norm to get normalized coordinates. And then we take that value and divide by the number of columns and the number of rows. So we can do param calls uh, to get rows and columns and make their default value three. We'll update those later in this patch as well. 
Um, so the norm is a vector, it's two numbers, x and y. So we'll pack the columns and rows together into a vector. And then if we just divide this by this and kick that to our output, so that actually is all we need to do to turn the coordinates into uh, normalized coordinates. And if we don't include the first matrix in our computation, then this should just always give us back the first one of these uh, submatrices. So this should be good enough. And if we look at the output of this uh, p window, this should just be this first matrix um, after I, as I move the slider around. Ah, and it is, <laughs> it's a great face. It is um, only, I should throw a speed limb here because this is actually triggering a lot of computation. So we don't wanna be doing it at update rate, which I think is two milliseconds. So yeah, you can kind of see that I'm scrubbing. Uh, it doesn't matter where I'm scrubbing. Um, it's always this first one. <laughs> this collection of faces is really good. Um, Cool, so now I want to use the grayscale value in this first one. To, well, actually I don't want to use the grayscale value, I just want to use the first value. So we'll just swizz zero. So we're gonna be supplying red, green, blue, and alpha, but we're only gonna use the first value, so AKA red. And then I want to turn that into an index. Uh, so I want to turn that first into an index and then use that to push over the X and Y values to sample a different submatrix. So first, turning that into an index, that's a piece of cake. We just take the columns and the rows, and we multiply these together, and then multiply the number between zero and one by the number of columns times rows to scale it up. And then we take that and we take the floor or maybe we don't need the, f I think we need the floor later. So um, that gives us a number between zero and say n, where n is rows times columns. So remember that we can do that modulo the number of columns to get which column we're talking about and do division to get which row we're talking about. And then because I uh, want to pick a particular one of these and not some in-between value, we're gonna take the floor of each of these. And then finally, um, that value, so this is which column we are, this is which row we are. Um, I want to divide this by the number of columns to get a normalized value uh, between zero and one, and divide the row by the number of rows to get a normalized value between zero and one. And then my friend, all we gotta do is pack these into a vec like so, add this to the offset that comes from here, plus, and hey bang presto, Bob is your whatever, aunt, and um, that should do it, man. So now, if that's all been done correctly, I should be able to come over here and delete if I delete now this patch cord, so that, oh, actually let's do a little motion first. Hey, and then delete this patch cord so that this matrix stops updating. I should now be able to drag this slider around and sample between different values in this matrix. And look at that, it's not working at all. That's very exciting. Um, why is it not working at all? Well. Let's take a look back inside this JGL picks and see if I made one of several possible rookie mistakes. Uh, just looking for rookie mistakes, everything looks fine. So what have I done wrong? I took columns, multiply them by rows, swizz, that's definitely correct. Um, okay, so if we just, uh, if I just do this, is this fine? Is this okay? No, that's still broken somehow. Okay. That divided by... 
What's frustrating about this is that it worked totally fine a second ago. Why is this always... What have I done that this is now not working, I wonder? Rows three, columns three. Uh... <laughs> um... Okay, so let's uh, actually set the um, rows and columns externally here. So hold, I'm going to shrink this guy down a little bit and move this over. And we'll grab this pbar calls, pbar rows, pre, uh, calls dollar one, and rows dollar one. And we'll make sure that these update uh, are updating as one would as one would expect as one would expect columns and rows. For some reason, I think uh, what was happening is for some reason that I can't totally identify. You know what it was? I think was that somehow this param rows and these were interfering with each other. I'm not totally sure what was going on there. But um, just actually setting the um, column and row value of this guy explicitly using this uh, using these message boxes seems to have um, solved this problem. So now, if I drag this, yeah, now you can see. Thank God, uh, you can see me scrubbing as I scrub here. It's scrubbing through these different frames of a video. Okay, so so far we've done a lot of work, kind of and haven't really achieved what I wanted to achieve. But that is about to change, my friends. So instead of using a boring, old, enormous, plain white or black matrix to um, sample from, to, to sample with, why don't we do, use something more exciting, like maybe a matrix of noise? So let's come over here and... Um, Let's move this guy aside and do jit.noise for float 32 and uh, grab this render bang. And for now, we'll make this guy 640, 480 and just connect him straight into. Uh, sorry, one thing I forgot is that. Um, this matrix down here needs to have the at adapt zero flag set. But now if I take this uh, noise and connect it in here, oops, not in there, in here, what have I done? Ah, got to set the columns and rows again. So now you can see what's going on here, hopefully. Um, I'm going to take this texture and attach it to jit.world so we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to do send final text and then make a receive final text. And then if you come over to jit.world, you can see what's going on. So what's going on here that's kind of interesting is um, if I hold very still, everything looks normal. But then as you move, the parts of the image that are changing are kind of getting blurred with the parts that are not changing. And if you do things like only move your mouth, say, or only move your eyes, things get weird. You can do a little Arshul Gorky simulator if you hold still and just move your hands. <laughs> Pretty good, I guess. Um, and then the other thing that you can do that's cool, as as is always the case, if you take your um, if you take a regular noisy matrix and pixelate it, things get exciting. So I'll make another integer box, a couple more integer boxes here to control the number of pixels, uh, that you, the resolution of your noise. So we'll just do poc, and then. Prepend dim so that you can do something like 
uh, maybe only have make your noise have like uh, uh, have have be separated into four columns but lots of rows and then you know you get this kind of thing going on which looks pretty cool and if you move quickly you kind of get pulled back in time by your own you know glitchy past mm. so that's cool um what else can you do that's fun uh you can if you take the matrix coming in here and you stop sending it to this matrix so what you would do to do this thing is take this matrix that's going down to this counter and all that and um you can just make a key move this up a bit uh let's delete this for a second so you make a key and then a cell 32, say, to select the space bar, and a toggle, and then make a gate. And then you can use this to turn recording on and off. And if you do that, then, uh, yeah, you can see now it's like it's frozen on that particular recording, so let's make a, Turn recording on. So now it's it's constantly recording. But if you just hold still for a second, or let's see, you can you can record a few seconds of yourself like just looking at the camera, and then move to the side and do a little bit more recording. And to the other side, do a little more recording, and you get this like frozen triptych of yourself. Which I don't know if you're into frozen triptychs. Who wouldn't be into a frozen triptych of themselves? But if you're into that kind of thing, you can do you can do that. And maybe let's just make it like 16 by 16 pixels. Yeah, there you go. That's a neat little effect. So um, in any case, uh, that's uh, as, as is always the case, there's the basics and I leave it up to you, actual creative people to go and, and do something fun with that. But um, for now, thanks for watching. I hope that was informative and um, at least slightly useful and uh, look forward to the next one. I'll see you guys soon.